Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into um, something really cool, the Linux kernel. Yeah, I know it sounds pretty technical, but trust me, it's the heart and soul of every Linux system. And by the end of this video, you'll see exactly why it matters. So um, let's jump right in. All right. So what exactly is a kernel? Simply put, the kernel is the central part of any operating system. It manages all the resources, handles system calls, and controls how hardware communicates with software. Without a kernel, your computer wouldn't know how to uh, allocate memory or process your commands. Basically, nothing would work. Let's take a quick trip back in time. In the early 80s, the GNU project was born out of frustration when Unix switched to a commercial license. Around 1987, a Unix-like operating system called MINIX was released for educational purposes. But Minix had its own set of limitations, especially since it was meant only for non-commercial use. Enter Linus Torvalds. Back in 1991, as a computer science student working with MINIX, he got pretty annoyed with its licensing restrictions. Plus, he was super curious about programming on his 80386 CPU. So he started writing his own kernel. By September of that year, his creation, uh, paired with the GNU core utilities, formed a fully functional Unix-like operating system. And that's how Linux, as we know it today, got its start. Now, there are a few ways to design a kernel. The Linux kernel is what we call a monolithic kernel. That means it's basically one large program that interacts closely with drivers and kernel modules all running in a protected area of memory known as kernel space. On the flip side, there's the microkernel architecture. Here, the kernel is super minimal, and many of the services run in user space rather than kernel space. This design difference sparked the famous debate between Andreas Tannenbaum, the creator of Minix, and Linus Torvalds back in 1992. And just to give you some perspective, while... Minix 3's kernel has about 12,000 lines of code. The Linux kernel version 6.121 has nearly 40 million lines. Crazy, right? Okay. So if you're curious where the kernel actually lives on your system, let's talk files. On most Linux systems, you'll find a file called vmlinux in the slash boot directory. The name has a neat backstory. Originally, the kernel was just called Linux, a nod to Unix. But when support for virtual memory was added, they prefixed it with VM. Later on, when the kernel image was compressed using gzip, that X got swapped out for a Z. Sometimes, VMLinux is even just a symbolic link pointing to the actual kernel file that contains detailed version and build info. So, what does the Linux kernel do? Here are the key roles. Resource management. It allocates CPU time and RAM among processes, ensuring everything runs smoothly. You can even adjust process priorities using commands like Renice. Input-output management. The kernel provides access to storage devices, handling everything from file systems to the actual data flow so you don't have to worry about the low-level details. System calls. These are the requests that applications make to the kernel for actions that only it can perform. Think of them as um, secret handshakes between your programs and the system. Device management, it connects your computer to hardware like hard drives, graphics cards, and network interfaces. A lot of this is done through Linux kernel modules or LKMs, which are small programs that can be loaded at runtime. You can check out the loaded modules with the lsmod command and get more details with mod info. In a nutshell, without the kernel, there'd be no operating system. And without Linus Torvalds' groundbreaking project back in 1991, we wouldn't have Linux powering everything from smartphones and tablets to massive servers running the internet. The Linux kernel is truly the unsung hero of modern computing. All right, so that's our deep dive into the Linux kernel. I hope you found this explanation both uh, interesting and... Uh, um, a bit enlightening on how operating systems really work under the hood. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below with any questions or thoughts you have. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.